In this video, we're going to cover some example problems for electric charge. First example, um, so the figure shows two positively charged particles fixed in place on the x-axis. So that's shown right here. You have q1 and q2. They're separated by a distance of r, which is 0 0.0200 meters. q1 is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th uh, coulombs, and q2 is 3.20 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So what are the magnitude and direction of the electrostatic force, F1, F2, on particle 1 from particle 2? So again, we're trying to find F12. Oops, F12. Okay. So we're just going to use Coulomb's law to start out. Um, for the direction, we know that since they're both positively charged, the force of Q2 on Q1, so Q2 on Q1, is going to be to the left. And that's shown down here in the second picture. Okay, because they're both uh, positive, they're going to repel each other. Um, so when we're solving, we don't need to worry about the vectors too much since everything's on the same plane. Um, so let's just go ahead and use the non-vector form. So it's 1 over 4 pi times the pervertivity constant times the absolute value of q1 times the absolute value of q2 divided by r squared. Okay. Plugging in the numbers, we know that 1 over 4 pi um, epsilon naught is going to be 8.99 times 10 to the ninth, and our units are newtons times meter squared over coulomb squared. That is multiplied by 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, which is the charge of um, particle 1, times the charge of particle 2, so 3.20 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. It's all going to be divided by r squared, which is 0 0.0200 meters squared. Okay, plugging it into your calculator, you're going to get 1.15 times 10 to the negative 24 Newtons. Now this is the non-vector form, so we want to probably put in the vector form. Um, so to do that, since we know it's to the left, which is in the negative x direction, so again over here we know charge is going to be going to the left, which is negative x. So in vector form, we can just say it's going to be negative 1.15 times 10 to the negative 24 newtons times i. So i is going to be our, um, our uh, unit vector in the x direction. So let me change, oops, nope, don't do that. Okay, got that fixed. So again, this i here is just going to be our unit vector. For x. Okay. All right. So again, did we answer the question? What's the magnitude and direction for the electrostatic force on particle one from particle two? So that's given here. We're giving our direction in the negative x direction, um, and there's our magnitude. Okay. Next question. All right. So this figure here is going. Um, it's the same situation, but we're adding in Q3. So Q3 is placed between Q1 and Q2. Uh, particle 3's uh, charge is negative 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19. It's a negative because it's a negative charge. And it's at a distance of 3 fourths r away from particle 1. So what is the net electrostatic force on particle 1 due to particles 2 and 3? All right, so let's first find what just the 
um, particle one is doing to particle, excuse me, what particle three is doing to particle one. All right, so same way as before, we can say f13 is equal to one over four pi times our permittivity constant. This is gonna be q1, and this is the absolute value of q3 now. Divide that by three fourths r squared. Writing this all out, we have 8.99 times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared over Coulomb squared times 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th Coulombs times our Q3. And we've taken the absolute value. We'll deal with the negative sign later. It's 10 to the negative 19. Okay, and that's all going to be over. This time it's uh, 3 fourths r squared. So if we do 3 over 4 squared, 0 0.8 squared. Okay. And this is all going to be equal to 2.05 times 10 to the negative 24 newtons. Now again, we want to put that in our vector form. So if we look at this, we know that one's positive and one's negative, so they're going to be an attractive force, which means if you look down here, the force is going to be to the right. So we would expect a positive value. Um, so it would just be 2 point, oops, 2.05 times 10 to the negative 24 newtons in the i direction. All right, so now I only found um, the force between 3 and 1, but previously we found the force between 2 and 1. Um, so we want to add them together. So if you just say this, so the force 1, comma, net, is going to be F12 plus F13. So again, we need to, oops, we need to make sure that we uh, keep the negative signs um, when appropriate. So since we're dealing with vectors here, let's say that this is equal to negative 1.15 times 10 to the negative, oops, 24 newtons in the i direction plus 2.05 times 10 to the negative newtons in the i direction. Okay. And just adding those together, you get 9.00 times 10 to the negative 25th newtons in the i direction. Okay, let's move on to the next example. All right, so this figure here is going to um, show us that there's a fourth particle now. So we got rid of the third particle, we're adding a fourth particle, but it's not in on the x-axis with the other two. It's actually um, up in the first quadrant up here. So the charge, um, Q4, is negative 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19. So we know that there's going to be a tractive force between Q4 and Q1. Um, inside a distance of 3 fourths R uh, from particle 1. It lies in a line that makes an angle of 60 degrees. So our theta here is going to be equal to 60 degrees with the x-axis. So what is the net electrostatic force on F1 net on particle 1 due to particles 2 and 4. Um, so we already figured out, again, what particle 2 was. That hasn't changed. But to get 4, we're just going to follow those same steps. So up in the top right here, um, we have that the force is going to equal that equation. We're using, again, the absolute value just to find what the values are. Um, and then, as you can see, we end up with 2.05 times 10 to the negative 4 newtons. Now, if you look down here, um, you see that we know that the, 
direction of the force is going to be up and to the right, and we know that F12 is going to be straight to the left. So we would expect um, a force in somewhat of that direction when you add them together, just by adding the two vectors. All right, so let's figure out what that exactly is. Um, so the first thing that we want to do, we're going to find the um, x directions force and then the y direction force. So just like in kinematics, we're going to break it up between an x and a y direction, um, and then um, solve for each. And then when we have the values for each force, then we can solve for uh, the angle. Okay, so it gets a little complicated here with all of our subscripts, but the force on one net in the x direction, all we want to do is add both components of the x direction. So a 1, 2 in the x direction, and then 1, 4 in the x direction. Okay, and when you do that, really, we know it's just the force of, of 2 on 1, because that's only in the x direction. Um, and then the force of uh, 4 on 1, cosine 60. So where did the cosine 60 come from? Well, if you look over here at our triangle, and we'll just draw an example over here. Here's going to be our triangle. Um, we know that the cosine is going to give us the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And we know the hypotenuse, but we really want the adjacent. Uh, we know this angle is 60. So to get this adjacent side, we need uh, the cosine of 60. All right. Okay, so we just kind of start plugging in numbers. Okay, so again, our net in the x direction is going to equal to our negative 1.15 times 10 to the negative 24 newtons plus 2.025, which we found up here, times 10 to the negative 24 newtons times the cosine of 60. Putting that into our calculator, we end up with 1.25 times 10 to the negative 25th newtons. So we also want to find what the net in the y direction is as well. Um, so we're going to do the same thing. Force 1 net in the y um, is going to look similar. Oops. It's going to look similar um, to the way we did it up here, but instead of cosine 60, we want to now use sine, because sine is going to give us our opposite or the up and down. All right, so that's just going to look like f12 in the y plus f14 in the y. And we know that there is no y component of 2 and 1, so that's just going to be 0. And the second part is going to be F14 sine 60. All right, just probably logging that in. All we have to do is 2.05 times 10 to the negative 24 newtons times the sine of 60. Okay, and that's going to get us a result. 1.78 times 10 to the negative 20, whoops, 24 newtons. Okay, so here's the x component. Here is the y component. So all we have to do is square them and take the square root, and we'll get um, what the overall vector for f1 is. All right, so f1 net is going to be equal to the square root of f1 net x, and we'll square that, plus f1 net y, and square that. And solving for that, we get 1.78 times 10 to the negative 24 newtons. 
The last thing that we want to do is find out what the angle is. So we found the magnitude, which is given here. Um, now we just need to figure out what the angle is. So to do that, um, all we have to do is take the tangent, because we know that uh, tangent of theta is going to equal to opposite over oops, adjacent. Um, and the opposite over adjacent, those are going to be um, our F1 net, F1 net Y on the top, and F1 net X uh, on the bottom. Now to find theta, we just take the inverse tangent, so it's going to be theta is equal to be the inverse tangent of f1 net y over f1 net x. Plugging in the values that we had on the previous screen, we end up with negative 86.0 degrees. All right, so negative 86.0. Let's go back and look at that. All right, so going this direction from our x-axis, that's always going to be a positive. So if you have a negative degree, it's going to go this way, which means negative 86 is going to be somewhere down here. We know that can't be right. We already um, predicted up here that it should be somewhere up and to the left. Um, so we have to add 180 to get around to the other side. Okay, so we take this uh, negative 86 degrees and we add 180 degrees, we end up with 94 degrees. All right, so again, if we flip back, we can look at, well, 94 is going to be somewhere up in this direction where we predicted it to be. Um, so that must be the answer. All right, so if we look at the final answer, F1 net is going to be 1.78 times 10 to the negative 24 newtons. Oops. Um, at 94 degrees from the x-axis. Oops. And there we have it. That's all for the examples.